I have a love-hate relationship with Mortis. Sometimes this happens. <laughs> and other times this happens. All teeming shenanigans aside, being the bane of Amortis' existence, one thing is clear to me. Although Mortis is definitely harder to play than most brawlers, once you get the hang of him, the outplay potential and reward is incredible. However, just like Edgar, you do have to wait for that right moment. And if you want to see how I got Edgar to 800 trophies, check out this video, link in the description. As always, this challenge was done in Showdown solo, no teaming, and without his hypercharge because, um, well, he don't have one. Sorry, Mortis gang. My excellence is undeniable. In this video, we're going to cover the following. The pros and cons of Mortis. The build broken down. Priority purchase on levels, gadgets, star powers and gears. Best and worst maps. Strategies to succeed with Mortis. Best and worst brawler matchups. And a sweet, sweet, sweet conclusion to this story via a tier list of how hard this challenge was in comparison to other brawlers that I have reached to 800 trophies so far. So, let's go through the pros and cons of Mortis. Some pros would be his outplay potential is incredibly high. He has great kit options that synergize really well, not really map dependent, and has a high risk but high reward gameplay style. And some cons would be that he's vulnerable getting power cubes at the start, especially strong versus throwers, manual attack dependent. This is really important and long reload times. For the build then, let's start off with the gadgets. I personally use combo spinner, but I do see an argument for survival shovel. I take combo spinner because the extra damage after and during his dashes in a lot of cases is what he needs to kill a brawler or using the gadget after two attacks so that you can use the final attack to dash away comes in clutch so much that is my main reason for picking it however being able to do more attacks for four seconds could be clutch in an escape from danger situation as well or just to do more dukes so pick your preference on this one. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. Next up, the star powers. I have to be honest, I haven't actually used Creepy Harvest because I haven't unlocked it. And when given the choice, I chose Coiled Snake. Because being able to use the extra long dash quicker has been clutch for me in so many situations. But being able to heal after defeating a brawler with Creepy Harvest could have its uses if you go for a bad play or another brawler was close by that you didn't see when you started attacking, that the extra health may keep you alive. But either way, it's why I think Mortis has good kit options because there are just as many pros as there are cons for any of the choices that you go with him. All right then, the gears. I think that most brawlers it's gonna be shield and damage gear. And for me, that does work with Mortis, especially as the extra shield gear is great to make you even more tanky. And then the damage gear to deal more damage when your health gets chunked down in a duel. However, after I hit 700 trophies, I actually leveled Mortis up to 10, and then I took the health gear over the damage gear, because I think the health recovery is more important when you're trying to escape from a bad encounter, when being picked on by throwers, range, or teamers. The mythic gear for Mortis giving you 50% faster projectile speed on your super is not worth it over the damage shield or health gear, in my opinion, and therefore I have not purchased that gear. Okay, as for priority for the unlocks, as I appreciate not everyone will have Mortis maxed out, and therefore I would purchase as follows. I would get him to level eight ASAP, I would get the shield gear next, level nine, coiled snake, combo spinner, level 10, health or shield gear, and then level 11. And the reason for the order is because I think the extra health from the shield is key for Mortis as you pick and choose targets like an assassin, rather than constantly attacking. So your shield should always be charging. Coiled Snake over Combo Spinner, because it's more impactful. If I had to pick one over the other, as mentioned before, it's been clutched so many times for me in Solo Showdown. Okay, so for the maps then, in terms of his worst and best maps so far, 
So for the map rotations recently being changed, I actually had a lot of success with Mortis on Island Invasion. You see, you want to head for the middle of this map where it's less bushy and let the brawlers that want to fight in the bushes get on with it. This map in general has less teaming because of the amount of bushes that are in it and because of that quick finger element that brawlers have when they bump into each other. But obviously the downside is that you do kind of wait around for quite a bit in the middle and also if somebody does come into the middle as well then you're probably going to be discovered quite quickly but you still have that opportunity to wait for the right time to attack or move but overall in general i found that on this map i got way more wins than i did losses and i did hit 800 trophies so i think this is one of his better maps the maps that i would avoid based on the current rotation would be marksman's paradise as uh, just a little open for mortis stormy planes can be a little tricky as it's quite built up and so you'll need to be more precise with your attacks but overall i don't think mortis is map dependent it's more about your knowledge of the map and really really paying close attention to what ballers are in the match before it starts but if you do want to see what all different maps are you can go check that out on ballerfire.com so the strategy then in general success with mortis is to identify as i said what brawlers are next to you at the start and the closest box is say to get so it's not imperative to get a box with mortis which is where i think mistakes are made with him really early on because you have this mindset that you just desperately need to get power cubes to be at an advantage whereas with mortis that's actually not really that true he's best utilized as third party in a fight between two brawlers or capitalizing on injured brawlers and if you do want to get a box then attack and reload so you have two dashes free in case you need to escape it's also really important to keep an eye on the ammo being used by brawlers so that you can calculate whether you should engage or not. This is especially important when you're going up against other mortises. So try to avoid powerful close range brawlers and pick on throwers and range brawlers where you can. Ideally enter in bushes off screen so brawlers have to get close to reveal whether you're there or not. And make sure to use your first dash to hit the enemy as a second dash with combo spinner will likely kill most brawlers in the game. If not, use the final dash, but be careful of very tanky brawlers, as unless you have a huge power cube advantage, you may lose the fight to those types of brawlers. All right, so brawlers to really watch out for and actively avoid would be Leon, unless he's injured or overusing his shots. Two ammo of Leon is normally enough to kill you. I'd avoid Shellies and Balls, because their ability to spam their attacks when you get close to them is just an easy kill and easy pickings. So actively avoid that. Buzz can also be an issue as well, especially if he has his super or he's getting close to it. Piper usually always carries the slow gadget, so it can be a bit of a coin flip whether you win the engagement, even if you hit her with your first dash. So typically, if it's a fresh Piper that you know has got no hit and she doesn't hit you while you're trying to get close to her, and you hit her with your first dash, nine times out of 10, you will win that engagement, even if she used the slow gadget because you'll be able to use your second dash to catch up with her. Anything outside of those parameters, I think that she's a bit risky to try and take out. So, my final, final, final thoughts on Mortis then, on the tier list placement. I would definitely have to say that he sits in the struggle category and the first baller to enter this category in this challenge so far. I've definitely got better with him and having him max level has been imperative with both gears, star power and a gadget. This placement might change getting to a thousand trophies, but for now this is where I place him as a casual bad playing Brawl Stars. So for all of you pros out there with all the Mortis montage video clips and that, I applaud you. Great job. This is more, you know, getting a bit more of a realist, realistic expectation of what you can really get out of him. And as I say, I think 800 trophies with Mortis is quite an accomplishment. In my opinion, most of my friends absolutely hate playing Mortis. I also had that same idea with him, but the more I kept playing him and the more I kept trying, the more I just found him to be an incredible brawler and so, so fun. So, I hope you found this guide useful. If you agree or disagree, then definitely comment below. Let's have a discussion about it. Otherwise, do check out my poll for who I should cover next. You can check that out below. I did 
get the general consensus from the poll so far that everyone wants me to cover Larry and Laurie. I'm pretty much close to getting him to 800 trophies. I am considering whether some brawlers just really are that good and whether we should just try and go for the thousands straight away. So if you are invested in this series and you're enjoying it, definitely let me know if you'd prefer me to just go straight for a thousand trophy mark than the 800. Obviously, that's going to take me a little bit longer, but we can put some more time and effort into the video to do some extra coverage and just the process of getting through that. Definitely let me know. That is it for this one, guys. Really appreciate your support, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!